welcome to Lil Swin Schwell. Today I have another one of my classic crime book reviews where I take some classic crime and review them for you. It's as simple as that. I have three to share with you today, so shall we get into it? I will do my best to leave links for them in the description bar below. Although, if I can't get the exact copies, I might leave different editions. Right, I think I'm going to do this in rating order today. Let's jazz it up a bit, shall we? <laughs> so I'm going to go kind of least rated up to like highly rated. So starting off, I have The Moving Toy Shop by Edmund Crispin. This book is about a poet uh, called Richard who comes to Oxford for a little holiday and he takes a late night walk and he comes across a shop, a toy shop actually, it's in fact, uh, but the door is left open and he's nosy. So he goes inside, he has a look round, he goes upstairs and he finds a woman who has been murdered on the floor. And then there's a bit of an accident, there's a bit of a scuffle, murder is still there, and he ends up getting knocked out. When he comes to, he tells the police everything, but they can't find the toy shop. The toy shop isn't there, it's now a greengrocer's. Everything is different. The toy shop has moved. Where is the toy shop? Where is this murdered person? What is going on? Dun dun dun. Um, that's all I'm going to say for the plot because it'll spoil it for you. Uh, so this is a Gervais Fenn mystery. So we have Gervais Fenn who is a super sleuth. He is a lecturer, a professor of English literature and language, that's correct, at Oxford University. He is friends with uh, a victim, sort of, Richard. Um, and together they kind of go and try and solve and work out what's hap happened here. And I liked it. I liked it. Mm. <laughs> I love the character Gervais Fenn. I've read it, I've read one before and I really enjoyed that. And I, I just like the character Gervais Fenn. Gervais Fenn is very, very funny and you can't help but laugh at him it's great it's just warm and charming i also love the oxford setting i've said so many times i really want to go to oxford i still really want to go to oxford and um it just yeah it just makes me happy to read about someone that i really want to go to however the downside to this book is the plot the plot is a bit silly and I got about 100 pages in and I just kind of just started to annoy me and started to grate on me a little bit and I wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I would. Um, it's one of his most famous works, it's the one that people kind of rave about but I just... I think when you have two humorous sides in a, you know, classic crime book, it's but it's, it's not funny because it's murder and we shouldn't really be laughing at it, it's just... I don't think you should have a funny plot and a funny sleuth. I think you should stick with the funny sleuth and just stick with the serious plot and then he just lightens it up a bit. Um, so I ended up giving it three stars. I did like it. I didn't love it. The writing is good. Um, and I, I love Gervais Fenn and that's what's gonna keep reading, make me read these books is for the character Gervais Fenn. But yeah, I just, I wasn't too keen on the plot I'm afraid. So three stars. Moving up the star rating ladder, shall we call it, I have Clouds of Witness by Dorothy L. Sears. This is the second book in the Lord Peter Whimsey mystery series by Dorothy L. Sayers. I know I'm reading these in a really strange order, but this one starts with Lord Peter Whimsey and he's having a little break. He's on holiday, but he ends up having to come back early because his brother has been arrested. He is accused of the murder of their sister's fiance. It all gets very family affairs, very soap drama in this book. Um, but did his brother do it? If not, who did do it? And can Lord Peter get his brother off a murder charge? And what is his sister going to do? Read the book and you find out. <laughs> I. I liked this book. I, do you know what? I really like this book. This book, I loved the family element of this. So, so good. I loved having his brother, his sister, his mom, everyone in this. It was great to see so many people in it. Um, 
I enjoyed the plot. I thought it was good. I thought it was clever. I adored the writing style. As always, Dorothy L. Sayers' writing is just brilliant. It's so, so good. And yeah, I really liked it. I gave it four stars. What holds it back from a five? It's just not as memorable. It's one of those books that I really, really enjoyed, but I don't think it's gonna stick in my head and linger in my head as long as her other works. The ones that stick in my head of Dorothy L. Sayers are Strong Poison and Gordy Knight. They're the ones that like stuck right in there and I really, really enjoyed. And this one, I think, as good as it, good as it is, I just don't think it's memorable. Does that sound horrible? I don't know. It is really good. It's four stars, but just not amazing. But just so you know, I do love Dorothy L. Sayers very, very much. We'll definitely carry on with the series because it's great. And then finally, I have the last one, which is the creme de la creme in the star rating tower that we have got going on. And we have A Killing Frost by R.D. Wingfield. This is the last of the Frost books. Oh, I've read them all. This is from 2008. Uh, was when it was first published and in this one so much happens as, as they I say that in all of them but so much happens so we have I've got them I've got I've got a list rape murder poison blackmail etc etc and then we also have a new DCI that has come in called uh DCI Skinner Detective Chief Inspector Skinner who's come to Denton to try and get rid of frost for good I loved this oh wasn't this good these books are great the pacing is brilliant i love the character of frost the more i read the more i love him he is brilliant he is lazy a bit dirty a bit smelly um <laughs> but he is a really good detective he's really good he doesn't care about numbers he doesn't care about paperwork he doesn't care about anything all he cares about is his victims really and getting the job done that's all he cares about he's like just he he kind of lives to work sort of thing he's he doesn't really have hobbies his, his hobby is work and he does all the overtime under the sun and he doesn't put in money for that half the time he forgets to do it but he's just concentrating on getting the job done and he is a really good detective despite the fact that he is so lazy and never goes by the book and isn't really a credit for the force looks wise but of course he does have his George Cross medal which you know he can shove under people's noses every now and then if they're trying to like question if he's a good detective or not um and this book is great I love the fact that we have DCI Skinner in here as someone else that we should, as the reader, be hating. So it's, it's always fun to kind of hate Mullet. Mullet is Frost's boss and Mullet is someone who's very much on the figures because of course it all comes down on his head and Frost is not about the figures. He's just like, well, if someone's missing, he's going to put in the money to find them. And if he goes wrong, he's like, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> um, but it's nice to have someone else to kind of hate as well. I know hate is a strong word, but someone else to kind of dislike and grumble about in these books. And it's really fun. I love the pacing. It feels very real. I read this book in two sittings, despite the fact that it's nearly 600 pages. I just whisked through it. Star rating wise, four and a half out of five star. Really, really good. The only reason why it's not five star is because I've had a think and a couple of the other books in the Frost series have not got out of my brain and I've bumped them up to a five star. I am going to be doing a whole video on these Frost books now because I've read them all, sad to say, but I've read them all so I'm going to be doing a my journey with them, where to start and favourites and why you should read them because they're great and if you like classic crime you'll really like them because it's that type of feel, although this isn't that classic vintage, shall we call it, vintage crime. <laughs> but yeah, it's great, loved it. So that is it for my classic crime book reviews, three book reviews done. Let me know in the comments section which of these three books, if any, have kind of taken your fancy and chat to me all things classic crime. So that is it for this video, take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.